Good morning, everyone. My name is Eric Munoz. Today we will be doing a live training for the portable laser leaf area meter. We will begin our webinar presentation starting now. My name is Eric Munoz. I'm an application scientist here at CID Bioscience. I've been with the company for three years now. Uh, I have a Bachelor of Science in Biohealth Sciences, where I have most experience as a chemist and a food analyst. I'm currently enrolled in a post -bac, uh computer science program as well to supplement my uh, current skills in this industry. On today's agenda, we'll be doing an overview, quick introduction of the CAD 202, its features and its specifications. We'll then do a demonstration of the interface and the operation of the instrument. Uh, this will be a live demonstration. I have the instrument um, ready to go and we'll go ahead on uh, preview the menus, uh, the operation, and I will also be doing a data transfer uh, tutorial. Afterwards, we'll be doing a maintenance and calibration uh, piece, and then we'll finish the webinar today with the Q&A with me. So let's get started. The CI202 is manufactured by us, CID Bioscience. CID Bioscience was founded in 1989 and applies more than 30 years of experience in plant research instrumentation uh, to serve the research and, uh, and commercial community. We create non-destructive measurement tools to help researchers acquire consistent and accurate high quality data. Our instruments are known to, for their ability to produce accurate results, their durability, and probably most importantly, portability. Additionally, we believe we highly believe in data transparency. All data produced by our, our instruments um, are recorded uh, without further manipulation. Uh, they are fully accessible, typically via CSV files. All of our products are engineered, tested, uh, and manufactured under one roof here in Camas, Washington and the United States. So we'll begin with the CI-202 overview. Um, the CI-202 consists of several subsystems. It has a laser width scanner that can measure the width of an object 500 times per second. So a resolution of 0 0.1 millimeters. Um, this is in reference, the 0 0.1 millimeters is in reference to the width parameter. The entire instrument is controlled by a microcomputer system. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about the width scanner. When the instrument is in scanning mode, a rotating mirror causes a laser beam to scan across the objective uh, 500 times per second. This beam is reflected off of the special surface of the scan tablet, uh, scan board. Um, and will receive a light sensor inside the unit. The level from this sensor is compared to a threshold. We'll talk a little bit about the threshold uh, further on later on during the webinar. The output of the comparator is fed to the microcontroller, which then monitors the intervals during the width scan. Some key parameters that are uh, measured by the instrument are, of course, width, length, area, aspect ratio, perimeter, and the shape factor. Throughout the presentation, uh, if you are interested, we do have the calculations for how uh, some of these uh, more complex parameters, such as parameter, aspect ratio, and shape ratio are calculated. Uh, our web host will be uh, sharing those uh, calculations in the chat. The features of the CI2, CI202, uh, like I mentioned, it measures area, 
length, width, perimeter, and calculates the shape factor and the ratio and aspect ratio. The CI-202 is a non-destructive, versatile instrument. Uh, the instrument is able to take measurements of the sample without destructively uh, harvesting the, the leaves. Um, it also does minimal uh, effect to the leaf as it is protected by a protective sheath uh, that covers the leaf as you take a measurement. The protective sheath also flattens curled leaves to provide uh, more precise measurements. Uh, this increases, of course, uh, the area of the leaf. Um, and like I mentioned before, the instrument has a resolution of 0 0.1 millimeters for width. It has a 1% uh, error, percent error for length and a 1.56% error uh, for area. This instrument is simple, straightforward to operate. It's able to store 8,000 single measurements, 256 folders, um, which will contain the measurement. It is a lightweight, self-contained instrument with built-in data logger and LCD screen. It also has a rechargeable battery and it is charged via USB, uh, uh, mini USB. Uh, the instrument comes pre-calibrated and additional, we will talk about calibration later on in the presentation. These are the specifications of the CI-202. It is able to measure a thickness, a leaf thickness of 1.5 centimeters maximum. For width, it has a maximum capability of 15 centimeters and a length of 36 centimeters. The scanner uses a 670 nanometer laser and resolution is 0 0.1 centimeters squared. For accuracy, it is a plus or minus 1% for samples over 10 centimeters squared. This um, accuracy is slightly less for samples that have a smaller area. It uses, utilizes a USB 2.0 interface and for memory size, it has a capacity of 8,000 measurements, 256 files. These are the dimensions, weight, um, display. It is able to display 16 characters on two lines on an LCD screen. And for scanning speed, it's 200 millimeters per second. Battery capacity is 250 scans uh, per charge. To fully charge the battery, it takes approximately 10 to 14 hours. The instrument has an operating temperature of zero to 50 uh, degrees Celsius. Next, we'll continue with our live demonstration of the instrument. Let me take, uh, switch the camera. This is the CI-202. It consists of two moving part, of one moving part and one stationary part. It consists of the scan head and then the scan board, which remains stationary. There is a protective layer that covers the leaf. That way you do not damage it while moving the scan head across the board. I'll go ahead and turn on the instrument, and then we'll go ahead and uh, navigate through the files uh, and the system uh, menus. Upon powering on the instrument, uh, you'll, it'll lead to the measure, uh, measurement uh, menu, where you're able to select using the arrows, the left and right arrows between files. The up and down arrow 
are used to change the menu modes. By default, what powering on the instrument takes us to measurement mode. But if we scroll toggle with the arrows, it'll change the menu mode from measure to view to file, setup, and lastly, we'll cycle back to the measurement mode. The left and right arrow are dedicated to toggling through options within the menu mode. For measurement, we'll go ahead and take a measure, we'll take a sample measurement now. That way we're able to see how the instrument operates. Quick note, in order to take a measurement, you first must create a file. Uh, I have a file already created. So it's as simple as pushing enter. As it stabilizes, we move the scan head across the board and across the object. Once the measurement is complete, it'll give us our results. On screen, we have our area uh, presented as centimeters squared. Uh, to toggle through the parameters, we can either push the left or right arrow. Uh, we have a length, our width, our perimeter, ratio, and then aspect, uh, or sorry, shape factor. In order to save this measurement, we would click on the save button. Now this measurement has been saved to this file, file zero, zero. We can toggle between files and quickly take another measurement just so that this measurement is stored within uh, file zero one. And same thing, we can view all the parameters by toggling the right arrow. I'll go ahead and click save. One last thing to note, to, when taking a measurement, you want the scan head to first stabilize. Once the, once the scan head has indicated that it has stabilized and measuring has commenced, that is when we can then move the scan head down the board. I'll go ahead and demonstrate one more time. So click enter, it's stabilizing. Now it says measure. And I move the scan head across the board. I'll go ahead and save this one uh, for further analysis. Now let's quickly change uh, menu mode from measure to view. Within the view mode, we're able to view files, voltage, battery life, and flash, which um, has no function outside of technician use. So within view, we'll go ahead and enter uh, files, pushing enter. Here we can toggle between files, file zero, zero, and file zero, one. I'll go ahead and enter file zero one, pushing the enter button. And then here we, it indicates how many measurements are within this file. And then you can toggle between each measurement stored within that file. To toggle between the parameters, once selected the correct measurement, uh, correct measurement file, we can toggle using the right arrow to view the additional parameters. To exit a menu, you push the stop button. This will return us to the previous menu. Pushing stop addition one more time will take us back to the root folder of view of the view menu mode, where we'll go ahead and toggle to voltage. Uh, we'll go ahead and take a quick view of the operation voltage. Uh, I'll go ahead and return to the previous menu so we can then look at battery life. I'll go ahead and push enter. The instrument is operating at 90% battery life. Returning to the previous menu, uh, 
this is the that's the last option to view within the measurement or within the view menu mode. Switching menu mode to file, we have four options. We can clear a file, which will clear all measurements within a file. However, it will retain the measurement folder. For example, there are four measurements in file 01. I can clear those four measurements, but the file folder will remain. I can delete. Uh, next option is to delete a measurement. This will delete not only all measurements within a file, but the file folder itself. Next option is create. This is uh, where we can create additional folders um, in addition to file 00 and file 01. This is an important step when first initializing your CI202. Um, please remember that when we do take a measurement, when we do want to take a measurement, uh, we first have to have a measure a file folder created. And lastly, uh, the close option, the close option is since the instrument operates with flash memory, uh, in order to avoid loss of files, temporary files, it is important to use the close function. That way, uh, no, any temporary files are saved to their appropriate or respective file folders. We'll switch again the menu mode to setup. Uh, within setup menu, this is where we'll be, we can configure the instrument for our uh, particular requirements. Uh, there are two ways to save measurements to the respective folders. Uh, you can manually save a measurement like I demonstrated previously. I took the measurement and then once I was satisfied with the results and I reviewed them, I pushed save. However, if the um, workflow requires many, in, many measurements at a time, we can actually configure the instrument to take auto save. Um, and this will, this will configure the instrument to save a measurement any time that is taken. So I'll enter this menu. And then the two options are no or yes for auto save. Returning to the previous menu, I'll toggle to measure. Uh, this is where we can select between the parameters of interest. So the instrument, each measurement has uh, two modes of measurement, uh, leaf mode and root mode. By default, the instrument runs in leaf mode. Um, this, uh, this mode allows for the instrument to provide the root length, root width, uh, and the rest of the parameters. However, root mode actually only calculates the root length. It does not provide root area or root width. Returning to the previous menu and toggling to scanner, in the setup scanner menu, this is where calibration will be done. This is also where calculating the threshold will be configured. Uh, so I'll go ahead and leave, leave that for uh, a little bit later because now I want to demonstrate uh, data transfer. We'll go ahead and return to the view um, menu mode. I'll enter the files and I'll enter file 01. Within file 01, I have four 
measurements. Now I want to transfer these four measurements to my PC, uh, open them up in a CSV file. That way I can further analyze the results. So we'll go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna power off the instrument and connect it to my PC. The instrument mini USB port is on the right side of the scan head. So we'll go ahead and connect the USB and then connect it directly to the PC and power on the instrument. This is the CID Bioscience CI202 download program. You can find this program on our website. Um, Michael will be sharing the link to this program. Once installed and connected to a CI202, we'll go ahead and click on this open file icon where it will display both file folders that were saved to the instrument. I want to extract the files from, or the measurements from file 01. So I'll select file 01 and then I'll click open. And these are the four measurements that were saved to this file folder. We have uh, the two measurements that I took throughout this presentation, uh, 65.27 and 65.38 were the calculated areas. And then on the bottom portion of the screen, you'll see the averages for the entire uh, file folder. So this will calculate averages for the four measurements within contained within that folder. Once reviewed, and I am satisfi satisfied with the results, I can go ahead and save this file. And then I'll save it to the desktop. Now that I have my results, I will go ahead and open it up in um, Excel. By default, the instrument or the program will save these measurements as a text file. However, uh, if on Windows, you can open the instrument or these text files using Excel. So I'm going to share my Excel spreadsheet. These were the measurements that I took. It was saved as a text file, but I opened it with an Excel, with the Excel program. Notice that um, these columns and data are not imported um, correctly. So I'll go ahead and select this column I'll go to data. I'll select the text columns function. And then I will select fix width. This will allow me to separate uh, each character by uh, a space. So I'll go ahead and select finish. And now, the data is within its own cell. I'll go ahead and delete this row uh, for the units because that can be placed later here within its respective column and cell. We can do this for all of them. And then last, I'll copy this and just paste it here. 
and then we can save this for later analysis. That's a quick tutorial on data transfer from the CI202. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen and then we'll continue with the presentation. Quick note, all of these um, slides will be available for to share. After the conclusion of this presentation, we will make them available uh, for you to follow along as we went through the product demonstration. So we went through the menu navigation. We did a sample measurement. We reviewed and viewed the data. We were able to manipulate files. We set up and configured the instrument. And then we transferred the data as well. So next, I would like to continue. Um, and then I'd like to discuss a little bit about product maintenance. So product maintenance, there are two key um, pieces of maintenance. Number one, charging the battery. So if the low battery is a uh, warning is displayed on screen, the instrument must be charged for a minimum of 14 hours. Keep in mind that the instrument can take 250 measurements per, per charge. Um, and so if you are in the field taking measurements and this warning does display, um, unfortunately, uh, at this point, the instrument must be charged. Next, I'd like to discuss cleaning of the instrument. So the instrument must be treated as a high precision optical uh, piece. I will display where the key, the key cleanings should take place. So underneath the instrument uh, is where the laser is located. Um, this is a very sensitive optical piece. So using a microfiber cloth and light uh, water and detergent, this entire area should be regularly cleaned. Um, on the scan board itself, where this uh, the track is located, we also recommend that the track be cleaned with a mild detergent as well. Uh, this will prevent any buildup uh, that can affect uh, the optical sensors. Uh, maintenance is pretty minimal for this instrument. Um, the instrument is very straightforward. It, it doesn't require much maintenance. Uh, the only maintenance that may take a little bit more effort is the calibration process. So I will go ahead and share the process for uh, instrument calibration. So the calibration process consists of th calibrating three parameters, adjusting the width parameter, uh, adjusting the length parameter, and then if absolutely necessary, uh, adjusting the instrument threshold. So we'll begin with adjusting the width parameter. Uh, I'll go ahead and switch my camera to the instrument once again. And I will have to stop sharing the PowerPoint presentation as well. So on the instrument, we'll go ahead and navigate to the setup menu mode. We'll go to scanner. We will enter this menu and then there is a hidden menu that is accessible by pushing the save and the stop button at the same time. Uh, so, well, I have to enter scan first and then hitting save and stop at the same time will enter 
the uh, hidden menu for calibration. We'll go ahead and toggle to scan with, with the right arrow. And then I'm gonna push enter. And drag the scan head over my standard object. It may not be uh, visible, but you will be able to see the laser uh, across the entire object. And then on this display, it'll display the object width. So my instrument is reading 8 point, uh, excuse me, 80.1 uh, millimeters or 8.1 centimeters. I have taken the liberty to uh, measure this standard object. Uh, so the width of this object is 8.1 centimeters, just like my scan head indicates. And then for um, the accuracy, like I've mentioned before, uh, for width, let me move the camera. For the width, we have an accuracy of 0 0.1 uh, centimeters plus or minus. For length, we have accuracy threshold of 1% plus or minus. And then for area, um, at the beginning of the presentation I mentioned, had an accuracy of 1.56% uh, plus or minus uh, the result. So I'll go ahead and raise my camera once again. So I'm satisfied with the width, but now I want to uh, now analyze my uh, length. So in order to calibrate length, we'll toggle to step len. Uh, this is a bit counterintuitive. So we can, by lowering this value, it will increase the length um, parameter. So if I were to take a measurement and the length is not being calculated correctly, let's say the length is, the instrument is uh, reporting lower than the actual, we want to then decrease this value, uh, step length to from 96 to about 95, 94, 93, uh, lowering this value will increase the reported length. Uh, so I'll go ahead and exit the menu now. Uh, when all, in order to save any changes, you push the stop button twice, and then you would push save. I did not make any adjustments to the calibration, so I didn't push save or it didn't indicate uh, whether or not I wanted to save the changes. I'll go ahead and take a measurement to test my calibration. Going, navigating to the measure menu option. And then I'll push enter, stabilizing, measuring, and then drag. So I, the instrument is reporting an area of 65.31 centimeters squared. Uh, calculating the area based off, off of these measurements, uh, I've calculated that the area is 65.61 centimeters squared. So it is very, uh, very close to the actual uh, value. Lastly, uh, for the calibration, if we wanted, if uh, after calibration, adjusting both width and length, uh, the instrument is still not functioning correctly, we can increase or modify the threshold of the instrument. Uh, however, this should be done as a last resort, and it should be done under the supervision of a CID bioscience technician. Um, the entire process is outlined in our manual. Um, and if you wanted additional support, uh, 
I will demonstrate how to open a support ticket on our new CID bioscience website. So I'll go ahead and navigate to the CID bioscience website uh, and then open a sample support ticket. I will share my screen. So here on the CID website, I will navigate to products, CID two, CI202 portable laser leaf area meter. And then scrolling down until we find the product support option. I'll select product support. Um, and within this menu, there should be an option for a product support ticket. Uh, however, it seems my internet is quite slow or it could be my computer. So uh, I'll try one more time. If not, we'll go ahead and continue on with the presentation. Okay, so it doesn't look like uh, my computer wants to cooperate. So I'll go ahead and open up the presentation for our Q and A. Um, again, I was not able to create the support ticket. Um, however, I, it is a fairly straightforward process. We go to the website, go to the CI202 uh, product support page, and it is uh, a support option is right at the top of the menu. So I'd like to go ahead and open up the presentation for our live Q&A uh, portion of the presentation. Uh, I'll go ahead and field any questions that are in the Q&A chat box. Um, so I'll go ahead and open that up now. Uh, Manushi is asking, do we have to detach the leaf? Uh, no. So the instrument functions completely non-destructively. Uh, you do not have to actually um, harvest the leaf from the plant. You can keep it attached to the plant. Uh, and then with our protective sheath, sheath, it will cover the leaf. So no damage is done when taking measurements. Amanpri is asking, so this is a leaf scanner, yes. It is. It measures parameters such as width, length, area, perimeter, aspect ratio, and shape factor. Yang Cheng is asking, how many data can one file store? So one file folder can store the entire 8,000 measurements. Uh, however, this may not be the best use of the organization system. So we do recommend that it be broken down a little bit um, to something more manageable. I would say, I would recommend about 100 measurements per file folder. Erwin is asking, have you thought about creating a version with a menu in Spanish? Uh, yes, this is, uh, we have thought about it. Um, the instrument is 
although it doesn't come in Spanish, the menu system is very simple. We created it uh, to be as simple as possible, two lines on the LCD screen with minimal language actually involved. Um, so although it doesn't come in Spanish, the menu system is very intuitive. However, uh, we are still exploring the option to add additional languages. Is the measurement accuracy affected when taking from a non-stable or firm platform like a palm top as compared to a firm platform like a tabletop? Yes, so the measurement can be affected depending on uh, the actual uh, platform that you are taking a measurement from. We do want to ensure that the uh, scan board be as parallel to the floor as possible. This will help for, uh, be as consistent um, in measurements and it will provide the best accuracy and results. Subarna is asking, can I get a scanned image of leaves? So no, with the CI-202, this is not possible. Uh, we don't actually provide the image of the scanned object. Uh, this is we, the only parameters that are provided are uh, the five parameters that I have mentioned uh, throughout the presentation. However, if you were interested in uh, being able to to calculate and have an image, the CI203 does have this capability. Uh, the CI203 has many of the same functions that the CI202 does have as well. It's a little bit more portable. However, it doesn't do quite as well with irregularly shaped uh, objects uh, or leaves uh, that the CI202 has an advantage over. Kendra is asking, uh, can you explain more about non-destructiveness? Uh, so yes, the instrument doesn't, uh, you don't have to actually harvest the, the sample from the plant. You can maintain the plant or the leaf attached to the plant. Um, and we, throughout the entire development process of this instrument, we um, had taken that into consideration um, non-destructively non-destructive methods for calculating this. The protective sheath is very important in, in this process. So although we are uh, scanning or moving the scan head across the scan board over a leaf, the protective sheath uh, does a very good job of protecting the sample. Uh, Kendra's additional question from Muhammad via Muhammad is chance of error while recording in various plane or degrees. Uh, yes, so we do highly recommend that the instrument be uh, operated on a plane uh, surface, uh, ideally with the scan board as parallel to the floor as possible. Uh, there can be slight changes uh, and measurement based off of this. Uh, so we do recommend that it be as consistent as possible. If this isn't possible, then of course, then we suggest that it, all measurements be taken in the same orientation uh, and in the same manner. Uh, and Muhammad's third question, if it is recording the paper area, it will record the dried leaves also. Uh, Yes, so the instrument can perform measurements on uh, not only fresh leaves, but dry leaves as well. Uh, this, uh, my standard that I use throughout this pre presentation was a post-it note, uh, but it can be any type of object that has a, a thickness of 1.5 centimeters or less. Uh, and then of course, it has to have a width no more than 15 centimeters and a length no more than 35 centimeters. Great questions, Mohammed. thank you.
Uh, John Piero is asking about uh, the ratio and shape factor. Uh, so yeah, I can discuss a little bit more about this. Um, so for, excuse me, I'm going to open the presentation back to uh, the overview where I discussed a little bit about this, uh, but I'll go ahead and talk about the aspect ratio a little bit uh, in more detail. So this can be, it's the shape and aspect ratio are quantified uh, using the other calculated values. Uh, they're derived using uh, the functions that I believe uh, Michael shared in the chat. If not, uh, these presentation slides will be shared uh, afterwards. Uh, but the aspect ratio is the ratio of the leaf uh, length to its maximum width. So the ratio is length divided by uh, width, maximum width. Uh, for the shape factor, uh, the shape factor is the ratio of the leaf area to the leaf perimeter. Uh, so this is corrected so that the shape factor of a circle is equal to one. Uh, and it can be calculated from the equation that was shared. Uh, but if not, uh, the function is shape factor equals uh, four pi uh, times a uh, ratio of area divided by perimeter squared. Uh, I hope that answers your question, Giampiero. If not, uh, please feel free to email me. Um, my email was shared at the beginning of the presentation, but Michael will go ahead and share my email in the chat uh, box as well. Ezekiel is asking, should we mention the factor with unit uh, centimeters? Yes, so all uh, measurements and data is presented as centimeters. Um, except for area, which is presented centimeters squared. Uh, an anonymous question, if doing a lot of measurements like leaves from different plots, how do you recommend matching data to sample names later? Uh, this is a great question. There are many different methods for organizing the data. Uh, I typically uh, recommend using the file folders to represent either an entire plant or a plot. Um, so for example, let's say we were taking measurements, many measurements from leaves from a single, from many different pots of plants. So I would use my file folder to represent one pot. Within this pot, which contains the plant, uh, I will take many measurements of, let's say, many leaves of that single plant. So now I have all the measurements stored within the file folder. And then this way, at the end, when I go to transfer the data, I'll have uh, uh, averages of the entire plant for the, for the parameters involved. Jim is asking, can this be adapted to thicker leaves such as agave? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, unfortunately, agave typically has a uh, leaf thickness greater than 1.5 centimeters. So uh, no, I would, it would, the right conditions would have to be true for this to be uh, feasible. Uh, if it was a young agave that had leaf thickness lower than 1.5, centimeters, then yes, definitely. This would be a great tool to be able to, uh, that the instrument could be adapted towards, yes. Uh, Yang Cheng is asking, um, how long does the CI-202 battery life last? So the battery life is good 
a fully charged instrument will take 250 measurements. So 250 measurements, however long that may take. Um, if you are calibrating and you have the laser uh, on for longer periods, then this can also affect battery life. It will probably reduce at a much faster rate. Um, and then his second question is, can the CI-202 measure roots? Yes, as long as the roots have a thickness no greater than 1.5 centimeters, then yes, the instrument can be adapted and applied to the measurement of roots. Manushi is asking, how frequently do we have to calibrate? So the great thing about this instrument is a very simple, robust tool uh, that really doesn't require much calibration at all. Uh, the laser uh, is a very stable optical sensor. So calibration is a very infrequent process that uh, typically doesn't have to be done, I would say, more than once per year. Uh, if you do DVA, or I would recommend taking measurements of a standard, a known standard. Uh, and if you do see that there has been deviation, then yes, uh, you can um, calibrate a little bit more frequently. Uh, however, the instrument comes pre-calibrated here uh, at our manufacturing facility. Uh, Manushi is asking, any leaf area meter which have measuring width greater than 15 centimeters? So, no. Uh, this instrument um, has the capacity of 15 centimeters. The CI-203 has uh, even less uh, capacity uh, for width. However, it has a much greater capacity for length, uh, especially when a the conveyor belt attachment is attached to the instrument. Uh, however, the CI-202, um, while limited to 15 centimeters, it does a very, very good job of measuring irregularly shaped objects. Ezekiel is asking, is it possible to measure the leaf with a large area, uh, such as a banana leaf? Uh, that's, it would be under the same constraints as any other leaf, which is uh, the 15 centimeters width and the 35 centimeter length. Mohammed is asking, what if the leaf is rice or maize? Uh, can I elaborate? So maize is, uh, Oh, one of our most studied plants. Um, the instrument has been adapted to measure uh, maize. It can be, for example, if the maize leaf uh, exceeds the 35 centimeter length, you can actually take a second measurement uh, all along the length of the leaf in order to calculate. And using the data transfer program, it will actually give you the um, the averages, so it'll it can help in summing those values together and calculating um, uh, all of those parameters that way. However, the CEI two hundred three may be a better option for maze, uh, especially when equipped with the conveyor belt attachment. This will allow a user to measure lengths much greater than thirty five centimeters. An anonymous attendee is asking, you measured, it can measure seeds. How would it work with, say, a bean seed that is tip, that is basically round? Uh, yeah, good question. So the bean seed, a bean, of course, is oblong shaped. Um, and so any object that can be, uh, that has a thickness of 1.5 centimeters or less, uh, and does have a measurable width and length uh, to our specifications can be measured. 
So the way that the instrument works is interference with the laser. Uh, if there is an object that is uh, breaks the path of a laser, it will take that measurement. It'll continue to sum uh, the width and it'll sum the length as it uh, passes and rolls over the object. So just as long as the object uh, is 1.5 centimeters or less in thickness, um, then it should be it should be able to measure those objects. Shaquille is asking, will the accuracy be sacrificed on very low area leaves? Yeah, so uh, I did mention this earlier on in the presentation. So our our specifications are for leaves of 10 centimeters squared or above. Uh, leaves that have, or objects that have an area uh, lower than 10 centimeters squared, uh, the accuracy is slightly less uh, than it would be for objects um, that are above that specification of 10 centimeters squared. Ezekiel is asking, is the product available in India? So yes, we do have distributors uh, globally. Uh, we have uh, one of our biggest distributors in India. Um, if you have questions about quotes, uh, I will go back to uh, this slide where you can visit this uh, website um, on the slide. Uh, you can also visit us on LinkedIn, um, Twitter, and then, of course, our CID-INC.com website. Uh, and when you request a quote, you can uh, select the Leaf Area Training 2022 um, presentation, and it'll directly link you with a local distributor if you are, a local, are abroad. Manushi is asking, what happened when the leaf is greater than 15 centimeters and we use this instrument? So the leaf, if it's greater than 15 centimeters, it'll actually not fit on the scan board itself. So um, the laser will only go up to 15 centimeters. Uh, at that point, it'll, it, won't, it will no longer provide a signal. And so it won't, it probably won't actually give you an accurate measurement if it's uh, above 15 centimeters. Uh, Ikra is asking, uh, can we scan two or three leaves at a time? Uh, yes, so you can scan two, uh, two leaves at once. However, there are some constraints when this is uh, attempted. Uh, first, they have to fit on the scan board itself. Uh, and then two, it won't be able to differentiate and tell you that there are two objects on uh, the scan board itself. So it'll, all, it'll accumulate, accumulate all of these um, uh, measurements and it'll store it as one single measurement. So the instrument won't be able to detect whether it's one, two, or, or three leaves. Banu is asking, how can we minimize the fluctuation of the readings? So best practices and best way to minimize this fluctuation would be to be on a stable flat surface with the scan board as parallel to the ground as possible. Two would be to be as consistent with your measurement readings as possible. Uh, so while the speed that, in which you move the scan head across the object can play a little bit of a role, um, we do advise that that scan head be moved um, in a consistent manner uh, across all measurements. Uh, 
And then of course, if you are still a little concerned with fluctuations, you can take multiple measurements of the same object and then have a, or calculate the average of that measurement. Uh, so when I did the tutorial for the data transfer, the program actually calculates an average of all the files or all the measurements within a file folder. So if you wanted to scan um, the same object three times, then the program will calculate the average of those three measurements. And this will help with any fluctuations as well. Luis is asking, uh, can the detect, can the scanner detect areas, uh, holes within areas of the holes in leaves? Uh, and can it detect browned areas? So no, the instrument cannot detect uh, brown leaves. And the CI, unfortunately, the CI-202 also cannot detect um, uh, holes within the leaves if it's centrally located. Uh, if it's on the outskirts, then yes, uh, it is possible. However, uh, centrally located holes won't be detected. The CI-203, however, does have this functionality, this capability. Shaquille is asking, uh, will the accuracy be affected on leaves like wheat? Uh, so it depends on what part of the wheat plant you're taking a measurement from. Uh, the grain itself, you can measure grain. Uh, accuracy may be uh, affected uh, due to very irregular slat and as well as the object thickness. However, the wheat leaves should be, shouldn't pose any uh, additional complications. Ikra is asking how much uh, the accuracy and the error rate. So in the presentation, um, for the width, it has an accuracy of 0 0.1 uh, millimeters. For the length, it has a 1% plus or minus uh, error. And then for the area, it has a 1.56% plus or minus error uh, with respect to the actual uh, parameter. Shaquille is asking, how can we get the images of the scanned leaves? So with the CI-202, this isn't, um, it doesn't have this capability. Uh, the CI-203 does have this ca capability. Banu is asking, how can we reduce the fluctuation of the readings? Um, again, you can take multiple measurements uh, and average the measurements. Uh, and you can also, and, but most importantly, uh, take measurements on a flat parallel uh, surface and be consistent as possible across all measurements. Uh, Jack is asking, is there any way to type in or store uh, information? So typing in information on the device itself is not possible. However, when you transfer the data over to uh, a text or Excel file, uh, at that point, yes, you are able to add additional information uh, on your PC. Luis is asking, can you measure non-green areas in the leaf? No, unfortunately, the instrument does not provide any color data. Uh, and so measuring uh, non-green areas of the leaf is not possible. Uh, Gian Piero is asking, uh, the, what are the parameters typically used for? So one of the key applications for the instrument is to be able to have a way to rapidly determine leaf area uh, in the field. So 
in comparison to manually uh, taking uh, area measurements with a with a ruler or other uh, conventional method, this is a much faster way to do so. Uh, and then, of course, it has the benefit to be able to measure irregularly shaped uh, objects as, as well. So that helps tremendously with data processing and uh, rapid analysis in the field. Uh, this will then free up time for other um, maybe more meaningful tasks such as data analysis or um, other parts of the experiment. Adama is asking uh, uh, a question in French, it seems. So Michael will be translating the question and then we'll post the question again in English in the chat box. Unfortunately, uh, I can't answer that question at this time, but it'll pop up at the end of the, the list. Uh, Shaquille is asking how the field calibration can be done with CI202 and how often can it be done? So calibration is not limited to a number. It can be, the instrument can be calibrated and recalibrated multiple times. Uh, calibrating the instrument in field, uh, there's no real uh, benefit from doing it in field or in the laboratory. Uh, just as long as you're doing it on a flat parallel surface. Uh, can the conveyor belt attachment also be used with the CI-202? Uh, no, unfortunately, this is a CI-203 specific attachment. Uh, so it is not actually compatible with the CI-202, unfortunately. Good question though. Uh, can you measure several small things at the same time? Yes. Uh, however, it will not be able to determine how many objects uh, or how many separate objects are on the uh, scan board itself. So it'll give you the summation of all uh, the parameters. Ezekiel is asking, in some plants, the leaf margin will undulate or be wavy. In such cases, how can we use the instrument to measure the leaf? So this is uh, one of the other uh, functionalities of the protective sheath. So in that case, when there's undulations or wavy leaves, the protective sheath can help to flatten the leaf and provide the flattest possible surface, uh, exposing as much uh, surface area as possible. In what way uh, is this product better than the existing imaging analyzing softwares like Digimizer and ImageJ? Yeah, that's a great question. So. While Digimizer and ImageJ, um, they are great alternatives, they're, uh, it's a little bit more involved. So first for ImageJ, you would have to take the image uh, with a camera. Then you would have to export or import it into ImageJ, make sure that you have a standard uh, object of known length and width, uh, within that image. That way you can measure um, and compare that standard against your actual uh, sample image. At that point, then there's a little bit more uh, involved in separating the threshold of background noise uh, from the object image. And then lastly, uh, at that point, then the program will automatically calculate these parameters for you. But it's a little bit more involved. And then you have to have a PC uh, in order to do any of this analysis. 
Whereas the CI202, maybe if you're in a remote uh, location, uh, having a CI, uh, having a PC may not be, uh, you may not be able to accommodate a PC uh, or conditions aren't favorable and it's just very encumbersome. Whereas the CI202 is a standalone product uh, and it can calculate all of these parameters and save it uh, to, the, to the instrument memory itself. And then you can do the data analysis and data transfer at a later at a later time. Does the CI two hundred two is it capable to separate the total leaf area from the parts of the leaf that may be that may show uh, disease spots, uh, so that the user can have the percentage of the affected leaf or affected area caused by the disease? No, unfortunately, this is not uh, one of the capabilities of the instrument. It doesn't provide any uh, color data, so it would be difficult to differentiate from healthy and disease-affected uh, parts of the leaf. Uh, shape factor and ratio and the as and aspect ratio. Um, so these are uh, just supplemental uh, parameters that can be used in all sorts of studies. Uh, shape factor can be used to um, kind of differentiate uh, leaves of a certain species to a different species. Uh, of course, shape factor. Um, is basically going to be able to give you uh, uh, basically differentiate species, uh, leaf species. Uh, and then aspect ratio, this is, it may be beneficial. Uh, however, it's just a ratio of the length uh, to the maximum width. So and it's just using parameters that are already calculated, so length and width. Uh, so although it's just an extra supplemental data, data point, it, it can have some benefit, especially shape factor, uh, when trying to, differ, to, trying to differentiate between leaf species. And then last question uh, for today, uh, Andrea is asking, if the disease causes holes in the leaf, are these holes uh, deducted from the total leaf area? So if the hole is located centrally, uh, it will not be deducted from the leaf area. However, if it's an external leaf, uh, located on the exterior or edge of the leaf, then yes, this will be deducted from uh, total leaf area. That's a great question. Uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, I really enjoyed answering all the questions. Uh, all supplemental uh, information that was provided in this presentation has been shared within the chat function, uh, where uh, links to our website, links to supplemental research articles that utilize the CI-202, um, and as well as links to the manual. And uh, my email address as well is located in the chat box. And then at the end of the, this presentation, this will be is being recorded. So it will be posted on various media uh, outlets, our website, uh, our YouTube channel, and then these presentation slides as well will be available uh, at a later date. Thank you, everybody. I wish everybody a uh, good morning, uh, evening, or afternoon. Thank you. Bye.